longer flyable. But the pilots are not blamed for turning off the power to the passenger cabins. They were following Swiss Air's procedure for managing smoke of unknown origin. Ultimately, there was one critical decision the pilots made in the minutes before the crash, which attracted widespread criticism. There are still questions about whether the pilots took too long to try an emergency landing. Investigators say they turned towards Halifax, but then looped again over the sea to dump fuel. The pilot's choice to dump fuel added minutes to the flight. It was a procedure they could have ignored. Investigators want to know whether this detour cost the lives of the 229 souls on board. So what was our initial uh, altitude? It was uh... uh, 33,000 feet. They calculate that for a direct approach to Halifax, the pilots should have started their descent at the moment they declared pan, pan, pan. But at this time, they didn't know that Halifax Airport was an option. Furthermore, a fully functioning plane would have needed 13 minutes to make the descent. Theirs was only flyable for 10. By the time they decided they were going to dump fuel, they weren't going to make it to Halifax anyway. They were going to crash somewhere. Their decision on whether or not to dump fuel did not make one iota's worth of difference as to whether or not they were going to live or die. Captain Urs Zimmermann and First Officer Stefan Löw are cleared of any responsibility for the crash of Swiss Air 111. The investigation team successfully reconstructed the front of the plane, established where the fire began, and found the arc that sparked it. But they know a single spark did not bring the airplane down. To prevent future fires, the team needed to find out what had been burning. The threat to the airplane, in fact, was what was fueling the fire. If you have flammable material in such abundance that is capable of burning the airplane up, that's the real threat to the airplane. All the materials in American planes have to pass the U.S. Federal Aviation Authority's flammability test before they can be used. But something in Swiss Air 111's attic was clearly very flammable. I can think of nothing in the areas that exist that would promote burning. Their attention is drawn to the shiny metallized material that covered the fiberglass insulation, MPET, more commonly known as metallized mylar. We recovered some of that insulation blanket cover material the metallized mylar floating on the ocean. There's little pieces of it, and what do you suppose? But it showed uh, burn marks. Uh, it showed that it had been on fire. Metallized mylar was installed in 699 U.S. registered planes. If it had fueled the fire, all of them were also at risk. We had enough of it that we were recovering that wasn't burned, that we took a wee bit of it and uh, set it on the hangar floor and touched a match to it. Oh my God, look at that. That's incredible. And what do you know, it burned like crazy. Uh, very flammable. And we thought, man, this airplane is full of that stuff. Vance is confident that metallized mylar fueled the fire on Swiss Air 111. Yes, uh, we think we've come across what might be the problem. Um, he immediately informs the U.S. Federal Aviation Authority. It's a uh, cut fire. They had flame-tested metallized mylar more than 10 years earlier and passed it for use. One of the things that we did was to go back and look at the history of this metallized mylar to see if there had been previous opportunities to identify that as a hazardous material. And in fact, we found several events during which metallized mylar was on fire in airplanes. 
As a result of these previous fires, the plane's manufacturer, McDonnell Douglas, suggested metallized mylar should be stripped from all their aircraft. Four years before the Swiss air crash, the US Federal Aviation Authority had retested metallized mylar and found it was flammable. But they didn't ban it. The fact is that none of them had caused a loss of life. Had one of these previous accidents resulted in a number of fatalities, if you had a body count, then they may well have reacted differently. The FAA now had a body count of 229. Again, they tested the metallized mylar, subjecting it to much more realistic in-flight fire conditions. It failed. The FAA gave US Airlines four years to strip it from their planes. We know that we got results because we had blood on the water. There were a number of people did, and then people paid attention to it. And then we were able to move forward with our safety message and have it accepted. The investigation into Swiss Air 111 was the longest the Canadian Transportation Safety Board had ever undertaken. It took four and a half years to complete. Using the detailed information that investigators unearthed, we can now reveal precisely what took place on Swiss Air 111 and what the pilots faced in the minutes before impact. Twenty-one minutes to disaster. A wire in the attic arcs, igniting metallized mylar. The pilots smell something strange, but think it's an air conditioning problem. 18 minutes to disaster. Seeing smoke, they decide to land and head towards Halifax. 16 minutes to disaster. Air conditioning fans suck the attic fire towards the back of the plane. This clears smoke from the cockpit. 11 minutes to disaster. While looping to lose height, the pilots choose to detour further and dump fuel over the ocean. They don't know what's happening in the attic. Eight minutes to disaster. The captain cuts power to the cabin. This shuts down the air conditioning fans, allowing the inferno to rage directly above the cockpit. Seven minutes to disaster. The blaze destroys the autopilot system forcing the pilots to fly manually. Only now do they realize the enormity of the problem. Investigators suspect Captain Zimmerman fights the fire, leaving First Officer Love to fly the stricken plane. Six minutes to disaster. The fire disables the flight displays communications with air traffic control, and the black boxes. In the searing heat, First Officer Love struggles to keep control. But the plane is no longer flyable. All 229 passengers and crew are dead. To ensure against further loss of life, Canada's Transportation Safety Board made recommendations. Many have been adopted globally by the aviation industry. They suggested that procedures for dealing with smoke of unknown origin be radically rethought. Our recommendation was that if you have smoke or odor in an airplane, that you have to assume that it is a fire that's out of control until you prove otherwise. And that, I think, has sunk its way into the aviation community a lot better than, than it did before Swiss Air 111. 
Investigators' biggest success was the banning of flammable metalized mylar. We know as a result of the Swiss Air 111 investigation that materials that might otherwise have been put in airplanes are no longer being put in airplanes, so a lot of good work has been done and a lot of good safety action has been taken. While metallized mylar is no longer used in Western countries, airlines in some developing countries have not been persuaded to remove it from their planes. Lives are still at risk. The next steps to make air travel safer may only be taken after another tragic incident. The devastating news is confirmed at daybreak. All 229 people on board Swiss Air Flight 111 have perished. They basically told me, you know, there were no survivors, and I really don't remember much after that. I just, it felt like my whole soul was being sucked out of my body. The Canadian Transportation Safety Board launch an investigation. The deputy chief is Larry Vance. He has 31 years experience as a pilot and 14 as an air crash investigator. His starting point is the tape from air traffic control. We had quite a bit of information in fact from the very beginning because we knew that the aircraft had caught on fire if you will and